Welcome to the Market Mindset. We are the hub for news, results, and CEO interviews focusing in the junior commodities sector. We provide market analysis and perspective that will help position you for solid returns. If that sounds like something you're interested in, you can help support us by liking this video, subscribing to our channel, and clicking the notification bell. For more info, you can visit our website. All links are in the description below. Now let's get into today's video. A lot of people hear about lithium and they understand, okay, we need lithium. And they think, okay, well, is it cobalt or nickel? You know, and then they hear the, the downside. Well, if it's cobalt, it's the DNC and there's kids mining there. This is difficult. You know, is there a solution? A, a lot of people, if they even know what phosphate is, they would know it from the fertilizer, uh, you know, and they go, oh, okay, well, I, I, I know we need phosphate for fertilizer, but how does this ring into what you guys are doing and why is this so unique as well from not only a standpoint of where you are uh, with the, where, uh, cause that, that plays a key role, but also why the, the grade and whatnot is so important to your project. Lithium is important to um, both battery chemistries being the NMC chem battery chemistries the nickel manganese and cobalt chemistries, but also important uh, for the lithium iron phosphate uh, battery chemistry. In general, lithium iron phosphate batteries will will use about half the lithium that is used in the NMCs, even though that, you know that's variable across manufacturers and sort of secret recipes. Um, and then sort of the 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 phosphate is sort of kind of replaces the nickel, manganese, and cobalt that go into the other batteries. Now, are the two battery chemistries competitive? Being you know NMC versus lithium, I I, I think in a sense they they are somewhat, but I think in the greater scheme of things, they're they're actually uh, quite complementary. Um, in that if you look at the statistics uh, to 2030, it kind of has an even split where LFP batteries will be about 50% of the chemistries, and then the various NMC chemistries will be the other 50%. The LFP battery has its sort of um, it, it, its specialties, and the NMCs have theirs. Obviously, with the NMC, you get you know a little bit more power, you get a little bit longer range, but uh, you know the LFP batteries, you can't beat it on cost, and you can't beat it on, on fire safety, and it really is becoming sort of that you know, that middle class uh, battery of mass adoption, you know, take the kids to school, go do your groceries, uh, go to work, you know, and, you know, charging stations are developing everywhere. So, you know, you, you don't need those really long driving distances, the thousand plus kilometer driving distances. And the LFP battery is fine for all of that. Um, and it's got a good long life. And, you know, the fire safety is really important. It's not going to make manufacturers uh, end up on the front cover of, of a magazine or a newspaper because of, uh, of, of a fire or something. So the manufacturers like it, they can put a warranty on it. And that's kind of what, you know, if you look at the 1950s, that's what really got the automobile industry going, the family sedan, you know, that, that good middle-class use. So really the LFP battery sort of is good. It's going to support all of that mass adoption, but then the NMC batteries can sort of leverage off of on top of as well um, for what is, you know, um, you know, diff different uses, a little bit higher power, a little bit higher performance. Um, so I think they're wonderfully, wonderfully complementary, both, uh, both chemistries. And uh, it, it's great to see that the manufacturers now in North America and even in Europe are starting to really turn to LFP saying that, you know, they had invested a lot in NMC, but now they're saying, huh, you know, we need to be invested in LFP as well. So, you know, beautiful complementary uh, action happened here bet between the two new batteries, in, in my opinion. So what we're trying to do at First Phosphate is to create that sort of, you know, upstream down to midstream sort of integration where we can take uh, phosphate out of the mine, uh, we we can we can process it together with with iron sulfate together with lithium, and we can create LFP cathode active material that then can go into cells, can go into packs, and then can go into batteries. Just to su supply um, EV needs inside of North America by 2030, very 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 conservatively, PPA is going to have to go up by 35 to 50 percent. Personally, I believe that'll be you know 100 200 percent when you start adding in other uses, and I believe that you know all that you can pr produce will will be uptake, and there's going to be a massive shortage of purified phosphoric acid. And that, that's what we're trying to resolve for here. This deal you have, or this uh, partnership with MOU, that gives you guys a lot of flexibility, uh, a lot more speed, uh, and certainly a lot more agile in regards to uh, different routes you want to take. Cran already is the largest supplier of purified phosphoric acid in, in food phosphates um, in, in Europe. Um, they're amongst the largest in the world, if not the largest in the world. Um, it's important because they have access to purified phosphoric acid. So, if, you know, if we wanted to move and to develop an LFP cathode active material plant immediately before our mine is in production, um, you know, we would have access to that purified phosphoric acid. That's number one to begin uh, earlier production of LFP cathode active material. 
Number two is once our mine is in production, right, and we we, we put in the capex to um, uh, mine the resource and beneficiate the rock, um, then we would have to put into place a purified phosphoric acid plant, and that's very high capex. So until we're ready to do that, or until there's enough substantial volumes to do that, we can toll process with prion, meaning we can send our beneficiated rock to Belgium. They process it the purified phosphoric acid to us, and then they they will send it back to us. So that's a great partner to have, and you know. And then eventually, when we do want to build our own purified phosphoric acid, I mean, Prion's got over 70 years of experience in PPA. And in fact, they're the ones who invented it in the Western world. So, you know, through those three combinations of, you know, being able to uh, purchase a already completed PPA, being able to toll process our beneficiated rock in the PPA, and being able also to um, uh, have access to technology to make the PPA factory, you know, and the other thing is there's also an offtake agreement where, where Prayon is, is, is interested in purchasing our beneficiated phosphate rock uh, for, for their own uh, uh, factory there in Belgium. So, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a great way to get our volumes up. It, it's a great partner to have, you know, it, it, it just makes things so much easier and it makes the path so much more flexible and it, manage, manage, it manages to allow us to control all the permutations and combinations of this and to have flexibility. Tell me about Quebec why that is important. Also, like where you are, um, why that is actually beneficial. Quebec, I would argue, would, is a very, very positive place to have uh, the, 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 well, the the rocks that you have. Yeah, I mean, uh, like like I said, there just isn't the deposits um, inside of North America, sedimentary or igneous, they just don't exist. Um, and the odds of there being a new find uh, anywhere is very difficult. Um, so, you know, where we are in, inside of Quebec, obviously mining friendly province, a great strategy by the Quebec government in terms of, you know, electrification, they want to be the, the hub and the capital of it. Um, you know, what, what, what else can I say about that? Uh, where we're sitting in the Saguenay lac saint jean uh, area of Quebec, um, you know, I believe we're, we're, we're very well invited by the local population. We're, we're very happy to be there. Uh, we're working very hard to make sure that, you know, everything's right and that we, you know, we bring jobs. And we bring uh, quality jobs and we bring, you know, uh, a clean development out there. So, you know, we're, we're feeling quite happy about uh, where we are in, in the Saguenay region of Quebec. And we truly do believe that uh, the saguenay lac saint jean region of, of Quebec can develop into the LFP Battery Valley uh, for all of North America. You know, we, could, we believe that we could start off with, you know, a couple thousand jobs and we could easily get that up to, you know, much, 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 much higher quantities, depending on how far the government wants to take it. Um, you know, what do we want to do? Um, because there are the competitive advantage is there, the, you know, the, the beneficiated phosphate is, is there. Um, you know, also when you create LFP cathode active material, you need great um, amounts of, of hydroelectricity. Obviously it has to be clean because it's the battery industry. You need a carbon footprint around that. You can't beat that. You know, we've got uh, the space at the port of Saguenay, finding space at a port in the industrial world is very difficult nowadays. Um, it's all being developed. The Quebec government uh, has just uh, committed 115 or 117 million dollars to developing the port further over the next couple of years. Well, you, you know, as you know, we have we have uh, numerous um, phosphate showings and claims in, in areas in, inside the Lac Saint Jean, uh, Saguenay Lac Saint Jean area of Quebec. There's about 12 to 14 areas. Um, so you're going to see our, our main area, which is the uh, Lac Alorinel, where we have a 43101 already. With 49 million tons in the ground, we're going to be moving that into P PEA here very shortly. Um, also, we're going to continue drilling on another area that we know is, you know, is really surprised us, which is Beijing La Marche with some very high values of, of phosphate. We're going to be drilling there. Um, you know, on the beneficiation side, now that we have the agreement with Prayon, what you can see us doing is, you know, developing a pilot plant here at the beneficiation side, so that then we can, you know, have enough phosphate to start, you know, developing some samples, some samples of phosphoric acid, which then can be you know, worked in with, you know, iron sulfate and lithium uh, on our own or with, with partners. So you'll see us develop some of those partnerships as well, bringing that process together to be able to make, you know, our first batch of LFP cathode active material and perhaps even, a, you know, a small little sample battery cell. Myself, I look at projects for like years down the road. And whenever I know a company wants to be completely vertically integrated, I know that well, this is going to be a business. This isn't about just finding a, a property or finding a, a result and selling it and moving on. That's what I think is, is in part so attractive. You know, we're, we're here to, to, to build a business. Um, you know, stock prices can move as they need to, but, you know, we're going out this with a focus that, you know, we want to build a business. And that's why, you know, if, if, you, if you look at what we've been doing since, 
um, you know, about June of this year, I mean, if you look in our news section, you're going to see one quality press release almost per week, every second week, um, you know, meaning, meaningful events. Like we're, we're out here to drive this. We know that we have to build this as quickly as humanly possible because the battery industry is, you know, is coming um, and you want to be ready for it. Um, but yes, we, we, we are here to build the, you know, the, the next major industry um, to, to hit the Saguenay-Lac-Saint-Jean region of, of, of Quebec.